Hey everybody, it's been a while since I made a video, so I figured I'd do that today. As you can see, I set a ladder up behind me. I'm very excited because on this beautiful 40 something degree March morning, we are going to be egg dropping. A tradition this time of year at Sycamore Middle School. And this year we're gonna film it and talk about what is the best way to protect an egg when it's dropped from the top of that ladder. Let's do this. Okay, so egg drop. This is one of the most popular STEM competitions, not just here at the middle school for our Science Olympiad, but worldwide. I know physics teachers who do this in their classes across the country. I had to do it growing up. And then of course there are STEM camps and clubs and other activities that you maybe just do this for fun. We've done this specifically for all 35 years of our SMS Science Olympiad, which of course has become a longstanding tradition here at our middle school. In fact, I get parents every year that tell me, oh, I remember doing Science Olympiad when I went to school here, and I specifically remember doing the egg drop. So what is the whole goal of this? Well, it's kind of an engineering activity where you have to design something to protect this guy, an egg, as it's dropped from the top of a 10-foot ladder. The whole goal is to protect the shell of this egg so that the egg, after being dropped, is unbroken, it's protected. To do that, of course, we have to put it in some sort of capsule or device that we design around it to keep it from breaking, because as we all know, eggs are fragile. <laughs> that is not good. So the goal of the competition is you get a certain amount of materials, a certain amount of time, and you have to design something using prior knowledge that's going to use simple principles of physics to help protect the egg. We watched a variety of videos, one of them being Mark Rober's video on how to uh, win at the egg drop competition. And he goes through several design ideas, some of them easier to execute than others. And all of them he endorsed as great ways to win your competition during the egg drop. Well, three of the ones that we specifically locked onto were the parachute design, the straw design, and we kind of modified this with the popcorn ball design. Oh. Oh. That, sounded kind of bad. that sounded bad, bro. We thought that these were three designs that were doable with the types of materials that one would get at our Science Olympiad. And it begs the question, out of these three designs, which one is the best design? I think the popcorn ball is going to work uh, the best because um, it's the one that has like the least likely chance of the egg like popping and flying out. The popcorn ball is going to win because it's the most compact and secure. I think that the straw design is going to win because the straws aren't pointing at the egg and so they're going to break and the egg is going to sink. The uh, parachute design will work the best because it will slow the fall of the egg so it doesn't impact as hard on the ground. I think the popcorn ball because popcorn is just simply the best, better than the parachute, better than the straw one. Anything about the design that makes it the best? It's popcorn. <laughs> so here's what we did. I teach five periods. In each one of these periods, we built the design three times. So at the end of the day, we had 15 different egg drop devices that all mimicked the exact same design, giving us 15 data points that we could examine to get us a better idea of what was trending as being better at protecting the egg, because obviously it would yield more unbroken eggs, whereas others may not give us many unbroken eggs. Now it's important to remember that all three of these are great ways at trying to protect an egg, depending on what materials you have. We just wanted to see if one of them had a slight edge over the other. So here's our procedure. We moved the ladder outside behind the LRC, our library, and each student got up on top of the ladder and was in charge of dropping their egg device. We uh, then unwrapped the egg devices after they were dropped and checked the condition of the egg. Once we looked at the egg, we classified in a qualitative way how protected the egg was after being dropped. The obvious one that you wanted to see if your design was well executed 
was that the egg was unbroken. Secondly, we looked to see if the egg was cracked. Sometimes these eggs had a little bit of cracking in the shell, but the membrane underneath the shell was preserved, therefore there was no leaking. So we called this cracked with no bleeding through. Then we saw some eggs that were cracked and fractured enough that the egg was still kind of in its shape, but there was kind of oozing through the cracks, meaning the membrane of the egg had penetrated. We called this cracked with bleed through. And then of course we had other eggs that were completely totaled. That one's pretty self-explanatory. The egg was obliterated beyond condition and we saw things we couldn't unsee. So anyway, we took turns dropping these eggs, recording our data, and here is what we found. So the parachute design, we had 15 of these drop. Out of the 15, 12 of these eggs were unbroken. So pretty good, that's about 80% of the eggs were unbroken. Two were cracked, but there was no bleed through. One was cracked with a little bit of bleed through and none of them were total. So after first glance, the parachute looking pretty good. Our second design was actually the design I was most excited about. Uh, unfortunately, it performed the worst. Only four of these eggs actually survived unbroken with the straw design fall. One of them was cracked with no bleed through. Four of them were cracked with bleed through and six of the 15 were total. In most of those, it was because the egg actually came out, it ejected from the cockpit, so to speak. Oh now our last design was the simplest, the easiest, and if you have enough materials, this one we found worked really well. A hundred percent of the eggs that were dropped inside this popcorn ball survived. None of them were even cracked. So if we used our data, and obviously there's a million ways we could do this, but if we use our data here in class, the popcorn ball design, if you have the materials, is the way to go. Because all 15 out of the 15 survive unbroken, untouched, totally intact. You can add that. Two, Two unbroken. unbroken. Three unbroken. Oh, the trifecta. So there you go. I hope this helps you gain a little bit of insight as to how you might pass the egg drop this year at our Science Olympiad competition. And if you wanna get the gold, remember this, you may not get the materials that you're hoping for on Science Olympiad night. You may not know what's in your bin until it shows up in front of you. How can you take what's in your bin and apply it to your new circumstance, the things that you have in front of you? How do we not know where this is? So that's it, our egg drop competition in class. If you're participating this year at the SMS Science Olympiad, I wish you the best of luck and thank you for being here, part of an event that we really take pride in here at SMS Science. I'm Mr. Hames, signing off. Have a great day, everybody. See ya. Don't throw it. Okay, he threw it. <laughs>